Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlil falahadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يقول الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا أما بعد all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God or deity worthy of worship but one, Allah alone. And I'll be witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah, the fear he deserves. And only die in state of total submission to Allah and to Allah alone. Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we continue on with this series. We are on alhamdulillah part three from the story of Adam. Adam alayhi salam. First, we discuss the creation of Adam. Second, we discuss the dialogue between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Iblis. And we mentioned his declaration of war against the human race. And subhanAllah, we spoke, and the, the amazing thing about the story of the prophets, the gist of it is in the Quran. And to understand the story completely, is we need to bring all the verses regarding the, the story, and obviously, to explain it and like that we will understand the fruits and the benefits of these stories alhamdulillah and we will understand the miracle of the quran we will understand the miracle of the quran that's why you see that the story is in different parts of the quran in order to understand the story properly grab all the verses read them learn them and obviously read its explanation and that's how you will understand the story in the best of forms and these stories, alhamdulillah, they're the best of stories, the stories of the prophets. طيب. So obviously we need to give them, the, the, the prophets, their right, subhanAllah, and that's why we are taking our time with this series. Alhamdulillah, after the declaration of war from Iblis, and after he was exiled from Jannah, having this high status, even though he was intelligent, and he knew what is right, he knew the subhanAllah what is correct. He knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his Lord. And subhanAllah because of his arrogance, because of his arrogance, he subhanAllah left the fold of Islam and he disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore he was exiled and thrown out of paradise. In came our father Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa, Eve. So Adam and Eve are living in Jannah. Living in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَقُلْنَ يَا آدَمُ وَقُلْنَ يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقَرَبَا هَذِي الشَّجَرَةِ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'ala says in the Quran, and we said to Adam, اسْكُنْ Live you and your wife, dwell in paradise. Live and dwell in paradise, you and your wife. And eat from its blessings and in abundance. Do whatever you want in paradise. Under one condition. Do not come near this tree. You'll be of the ones who are of the wrongdoers. Do not come near this, subhanAllah, this tree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوٌ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجِكَ فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَتَشْقَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also when he allowed Adam to come into paradise him and Hawa Eve 
He informed them, okay, do not eat from this tree and do not follow shaitan. Shaitan is your enemy. Do not follow shaitan, do not follow iblis. Okay, because he will want and his intention is to, for you to be forced out and exiled from paradise. Why? Because he's jealous. He's jealous of Adam as we mentioned. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what he is allowed to do in paradise and what is going to happen and the life that him and his wife will be living in paradise. إِنَّ لَكَ أَن لَا تَجُعَ فِيهَا وَلَا تَعْرَى You'll be able in paradise, you will be able to subhanAllah never be hungry and you'll never be unclosed. وَأَنَّكَ لَا تَضْمَأُ فِيهَا وَلَا تَضْحَى And you'll never be thirsty. You will never ever be thirsty in paradise. طيب. The amazing thing is that in the previous verse, Allah subhanahu says, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِي شجرة. Do not come near the tree. He didn't say don't come and eat, and eat from the tree in this verse. He says, do not come near this tree. And as you know, we all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا and do not come near adultery. Why? That's how the shaitan works. Shaitan works in step by step. Step by step. The shaitan never comes to us and he tells us to sin or disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then and there. He beautifies the sin. And he makes us fall into the trap and the, and the deceptions of the shaitan slowly, slowly. وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِي شَجَرَةِ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And like for example, zina. Do not come near adultery. So anything that makes, subhanAllah, uh, allows you to do this fornication, anything that uh, yani pushes you towards this, do not come near it. And the shaitan doesn't say, go sleep with this woman straight away. If you're a person that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you, he's a person, you, you are people that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're coming to the mosque, he will never tell you to come and what? Go fornicate with this woman. No, no, no. He comes and he, subhanAllah, uses different words, step by step. For example, there's a girl. She just had a breakup. She's yani, vulnerable, as they say. Okay? Go help her, bro. Part of, part of the deen, bro. She's your sister in Islam. Go support her. Huh? Slowly, come through the deen. She's your sister in Islam. Huh? Then help her. Okay? Uh, you're speaking to her brother, uh, through her brother, for example. Right, you're going to go through a middleman. It's called a speak to her. Social media, it's fine. I'm strong. I'm praying my, my, my prayers. It's fine. Slowly, slowly. Halas. From message to message. To seeing one another. To catching up. To a wink. To a hug. Yeah, take a at the end. And then eventually like, you fall into the scene. And that's how the shaitan works. And that's the same procedure that happened with Adam. He didn't just say eat from the tree. Step by step. There are things he said. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains. But before this, what's this tree? What's this tree? طيب. We need to understand something before we explain it. The ulama, the scholars, subhanAllah, there are you know, in different, different opinions, but at the end, all the scholars say something. And this is something that we mentioned at the first lecture of this series. There is information it does not benefit nor does it harm. There's information out there, knowledge, that does not benefit nor does it harm. Okay? And believe or not, the shaitan can use this knowledge for us to waste time. So if we dwell for hours on something that's not going to make us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more or love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more, what's, who achieved, who was. The, 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 who had the better outcome, yourself or the shaitan? You spend two, three hours dwelling on something that does not benefit you, nor does it harm you. And this is the same concept regarding the tree. What was the fruit on this tree? Yes, the ulama have differed. Some say it's a vine, some say it's a palm tree, some say it's a fig tree. Huh? And some say something else, but before I get to that. But the whole purpose of this is that all the scholars that said this tree is such and such, they said, this is information that does not benefit. Don't worry about what was on the tree. Worry about how shaitan fooled our father Adam and worry about that it actually happened regarding the Adam ate from this tree. That's the, the objective. If we sit down throughout the whole journey for two, three hours speaking about some, this alim said this and this alim said that and this alim said that, it's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. 
Okay, the shaitan de deceived our father. And that's what we need to worry about. Subhanallah. So there's something that we need to be aware of. So the shaitan, shaitan is smart. He deceived Adam in, in such ways. The Jews have a concept about, about this tree as well. The Jews have a concept about this tree. And they say this tree is a tree of knowledge. The tree of ilm. Tree of knowledge. And so they've declared war against knowledge. There was a movement, a protest, from the Jews that they killed all their scholars. Killed them. And this movement, movement was no religion movement for the Jews. Anyone that had knowledge, they'll kill them. Okay? Islam, does it say don't be educated? Islam, does it say don't read? The first word that was descending to our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Iqra, read. Read. And many, the majority of the nation of Muhammad وسلم, does not read. And this is the biggest problem we face today. Why? Because our biggest enemy that is happening in society is ignorance. And ignorance only occurs when we do not read, when we do not educate ourselves. We need to read, we need to learn, we need to, we need to study. As soon as we move away from alim, from knowledge, we are vulnerable. We are vulnerable to the shubahat, to the doubts. That's all over social media at the moment. All over social media. You can't, we, sometimes brothers and sisters can't determine if a sheikh, so-called sheikh, has a beard and you, we do not know if what he's saying is correct or not correct. We can't determine. And that's because we do not read. We, don't, we do not learn. We do not study. So we are different to the Jews. We urge the Muslims to read and to educate themselves. So we are different to the Jews, alhamdulillah. طيب. The shaitan, he wanted to deceive our father Adam alayhi salam. How? Through the whisper. فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَ مِمَّا كَانَ فِي The shaitan, subhanallah, was able to fool our father. How? Obviously, through the whisper. How did, Allah, how did Iblis... May Allah curse him. How did Iblis whisper to our father Adam? Did he say in Jannah? We hear that there was a snake, so on and so forth. Or he said with how? At the end, there's no benefit. Who cares how? Did it happen? Yes or no? It happened. Khalas, khalas. The teacher is there. The result is there. He whispered. He got to them. How isn't, isn't, the, mo isn't the main focus? The focus is the result. He was able to deceive Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. طيب. How? وَقَا سَمَهُمَا And he made an oath. إِنِّي لَكُمْ لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He made an oath by Allah that I am indeed trying to advise you. Makes an oath by Allah that I am here to advise you, Adam and Eve. What does he say? He says, Inni lakum alamin al nasihin. And he says in another verse in the Quran, Ma naha kuma rabbukuma antil kuma shajra illa anta kuna malakain au ta kuna min al khalidin. He makes an oath. He whispers to them. He makes an oath saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only prevented you from eating from this tree except that you are to become kings if it is eat from this tree you'll become kings and you'll be in Jannah for eternity brothers we can sit down and say oh what did he eat from this tree he was in Jannah he was in paradise experiencing all these blessings bit by bit the shaitan got to him he doesn't want to let go of Jannah the blessings of Jannah is on no eye has seen no ear has ever heard and you and I can't even imagine Jannah he doesn't want to let go and not just this he actually made an oath he actually makes an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am I'm here to advise you this is the shaitan the ulama he have said okay why did Adam alayhi salam get deceived by the shaitan they said Adam السلام, was so innocent and so pure that he couldn't imagine 
that someone can make an oath by Allah and lie. He couldn't imagine someone was going to make an oath by Allah and tell and say falsehood. Couldn't imagine it. It didn't make sense to him. But that's what happened. He says to him, uh, he makes an oath that I am obviously uh, an advisor. And subhanallah, if you were to eat from this tree, you'll be kings and you will live for eternity. So he fooled them. He fooled them step by step. First it was waswasa. It was just whispers. Eat from this tree, eat from this tree. Then it was an oath. And then he tells them with the oath to eat from this tree so you can be kings. And if not just that, also subhanallah to what? To live in paradise for eternity. So subhanallah there was a, a, a wise king. I'm not sure about the authenticity of this, of this story. But it makes sense logically. Yani. There was a wise king. He's a Muslim, he's a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and part of his people, he had a group of people that would say, why did Adam eat from the tree? Why did Adam eat from this tree? We wouldn't have been in Jannah. We wouldn't have been in this difficult life, so on and so forth. So this king brought them to a husband and wife. He invited them to his palace and he said to them, you are allowed to live in this palace forever. Eat from it whatever you want. Every day, there's going to be three meals. Okay, these meals will come. You can eat from whatever you want on this, on this plate or on this, subhanAllah, on this serving. Except one plate. There's a cover on it. Do not open this. Eat as much as you want. Just that one dish, small plate. Just don't open that one. So they'll eat from this tree day, week, month, years. Eventually, huh? a human wants to explore. He can't. That's what we are, humans. They want to explore, they want to know what, why, why can I eat from this dish? What's underneath this, this dish? So by, the, by that time, خلاص, both of them convince one another, the husband and wife, that the next meal we're going to open this dish. So they opened it and a bird flew out. And a bird flew out. خلاص, the, the ruler there knew that they opened the dish. And he says, see, don't blame your father. Don't blame Adam. I say, we were all, we were all of Yani, ate from the tree. In other words. So, this is something that we need to be aware of. So, he deceived them. When they ate from this tree, their clothing in paradise disappeared. And what was apparent was their private parts. What was apparent was their private parts. Their private part was exposed. So they start to rip the leaves of the trees in paradise. Rip all the leaves and try to cover the, the private parts. A moment. A moment here, brothers and sisters. The human being, he forgot about everything. He just wanted to cover his private part. And that shows how pure the human being are. They will never, they're never happy to expose the private parts. Believe it or not, maybe 50, 60 years ago in history, go, go see, see, read history. The ones who are noble, noble women, non-Muslims, noble women, they had to cover their body. They needed to cover their body because they were noble women. Noble women. Like the queen that died. Allah minna. But the, the queen that died, she had certain people talking to her. Certain people can shake her hands. Not everyone. Not everyone can. But society today wants to eradicate modesty, wants to eradicate shyness. They don't want our women or our men to be shy anymore. So they push this agenda of being free. Now you're, you're selling yourself, you're a slave, but you're free. I ask you a logical question. Yeah. Would you eat one of these two lollies? Which one would you pick? A lolly that's been unwrapped. Someone has leaked it, thrown it onto the floor, and dust and ants has come to this lolly? Or would you eat a lolly that's been untouched? It's still wrapped. Which one would you eat? You would obviously eat the lolly that's been wrapped. And the wise man, the normal man, the one with, with modesty, subhanAllah, and he has haya, will, pick, will choose the same. Will choose the same. Something that's been untouched or unwrapped. And that's what we need to advise our sisters insha'Allah. 
طيب فبدا وطفقا يخسفان عليهما من ورق الجنه سناو خلاص لف كمير دي سين لف ايدن فروم دي ستري ادم اند ايف هاف ايدن فروم دي ستري اند ذير از اولسو انذر اوبينيون ذات ذا وايف ادم ايف واز ذا وان ذات بوشت ادم تو ايف فروم دي ستري didn't they both eat from the tree that's the result who pushed who doesn't matter they both ate from the tree فأكلاه. both what's one that says both ate from this tree وناداهما ربهما ألم أنهكما عن تلكما الشجرة وأقول لكما إن الشيطان كان إن الشيطان لكم عدو مبين الله سبحانه وتعالى then calls them and he says to them did I not forbid you from eating from this tree and did not I, I inform you that this devil, this Iblis, is but an enemy to you? And he's an apparent enemy, yani he's, you know he's an enemy, like us today. Shaitan, we know he's an enemy, but yet we get deceived. Yet we fall into his tricks and his traps. But every son of Adam and Adam do sinners. But the best of sinners are the ones that come back and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا These are straight away the words of Adam. They said, both of them said, Adam and Eve. They said, Oh Allah, we have oppressed ourselves. We are, we've acknowledged that we've done a sin. ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And if you do not forgive us and bestow your mercy upon us, we will be of the losers. Iblis sinned, Iblis sinned, so did Adam alayhi salam, so did Eve alayhi salam, Hawa. But what's the difference? Adam straight away acknowledged his sin and repented. Whereas Iblis was stubborn and arrogant about his mistake. And, he did, and then he obviously declared that war and he had that mission that's going to fail that he wants to do. Obviously, destroy the generate the race of Adam alayhi salam. That's the difference. Adam sinned, so did Iblis. Adam straight away acknowledged the sin and he repented. So did Hawa. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّي كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ so after Adam alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated to him with words that he has accepted the tawbah. They've accepted, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted from Adam and Eve their repentance. But he said, khalas. Obviously you've done the sin. You've disobeyed me. قَالَ هَبِطُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوا وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين. He says, leave, go down, leave Jannah, go down to earth. بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوا You and your race, Adam and the generations and all of his offsprings are an enemy to Iblis and all of his offsprings. Until يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Until the end of time. بعضكم لبعض عدو. He is our enemy, and for us, we are the enemy of Iblis. ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين. And on earth, you will be able to settle and enjoy life. Islam isn't just about being, يعني, always angry and only عبنا. So let you let it settle down. You let it enjoy life under the legislations and the laws of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, without disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So that's the difference between Adam السلام, and Iblis, the one that's cursed, the one that is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now one of the brothers asked me last week, which is very important, is brother, are we allowed to curse Iblis? When it's information, Iblis has been cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of information. طيب? Out of information, we are allowed to uh, obviously curse Iblis and his followers when we are informing people. But when something happens and you get frustrated, and you say, then on Iblis or then on Shaitan, then that's wrong because the Shaitan is happy. Because he believes that he's obviously made you get angry. So instead, as the Prophet told us, say Bismillah. When you get angry, say Bismillah. Mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name and that will make the Shaitan burn more. A few things, inshallah, brothers and sisters. 
Which paradox is it? There is a huge difference of opinion regarding this Jannah that Adam salam, was living. Like, was it Jannah on earth or Jannah that we know? Jannah, Jannah, the hereafter Jannah, the one that we are promised. And I'm not going to get into the, the huge difference of opinion because it just, it's a lot and each one has their own, uh, subhanAllah, evidences. But we go with the majority of scholars. We go with the majority of scholars and they've said that Adam was in paradise, paradise. The Jannah that we know. And the evidence is on a day of judgment when all of the creation come to Adam first to ask him for intercession. He will say, and am I, am I not the one that from the, from the start or from the get-go was the one that was you know, the reason for you to leave paradise. طيب. There's also another difference of opinion regarding where did they come down. Uh, some of them say in India, some of them say one in Safa, one in Marwa, and when they met, and so on and so forth. Allah Ta'ala Again, it is knowledge. There's no benefit, nor does it harm. But eventually they came down to earth, and obviously they lived their life on earth, and they conceived the first uh, children, Qabil and Habil, inshallah, which we'll, we'll get to next week. Tayyip. Adam alayhi salam was honored by four things. He was honored by four things. One of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew the ruh, the ruh, subhanAllah, the, the, the soul into Adam alayhi salam. The second is that he commanded the, the angels to prostrate to Adam. The third is that he taught him the names, the names. And obviously these are things that we've mentioned already and explained in the previous lessons. The fourth one, so I want to speak a bit of aqidah here. The fourth one is that he fashioned him and created him with his hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned and created Adam with his hands. Yes, physically. Physically. I'm going to give you evidence. Because there was a certain sect. There are two sects. We are in the middle. Ahl sunnah always in the middle. There's one sect that say, any time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his jawarih, or mentions, for example, his eyes or his hands, for example, in this, exa in, in this example, it doesn't mean his actual hands physically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have hands. He has power. But that's one sect. The second sect is that people say, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hands are like our hands. And for example, how we have right hand and left hand, one is weaker and one is, one, one is stronger and one is weaker. That's what the uh, Mujassimin say. Both are incorrect. Come in the middle. We've made you a just, a middle nation. Ahl Sunnah and the Sahaba, so the Sahaba, the companion of the Prophet Sallam, the Atba'a Tabi'in, the Tabi'in and Atba'a Tabi'in, the first three generations, and the four Imma, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, Wahid bin Hamad, Rahmatullah, Alayhim Ajma'in, are all on this opinion. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands, but what fits His Majesty? To what fits His Majesty? Even Iblis, the one we just cursed a few moments ago, even Iblis knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his hands physically. How? طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in the Quran, قال يا إبليس ما منعك أن تسجد بما خلقت بيدي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has says to Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating to the one that I create with my hands? With my hands. How did, how did, what, what honored Adam? And what was the creation of Adam different to all the other creations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the other creation with his power. But Adam, he fashioned him with his hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Iblis with his power. Adam with his hands. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he asked him, why did you posture to the one I fashioned with my hands? If, if it was with his power, then Iblis himself would say, oh Allah, but you created me with your hands too, as in power. Qudra. But no, Iblis, Iblis himself knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned and created Adam with his hands. Tayyip. Adam alayhi salam was mentioned 16 times in the Quran. Obviously next week we're, we're going to continue on and, spe and uh, speak about Qabil and Habil. But one of the lessons that we can take from the three parts that we've already discussed about Adam alayhi salam. The weakness of humans. There's no doubt There's no doubt that Adam and Hawa and all the generation and all the race and the sons of Adam and the daughters of Adam are weak. In a sense where we, we do mistakes. We do sins. 
كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون All sons of Adam are sinners We all commit sin That's why none of us can show off None of us can say that you are better than me or I'm better than you no, We all do sins We all do sins But the best of sinners Like our father like the, But the best of sinners are the ones that repent The best of sinners as, as soon as they do a sin They come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the lessons we can take, as soon as we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive us and bestow His mercy upon us. We take one step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to us running. It's just about us taking that first initiative. As soon as we do this, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, be, will bestow His forgiveness upon us and He will, will bestow His mercy upon us. So, okay, we're weak. But at the same time, we have a Lord and a God that's merciful and forgiving. As soon as we are down, brothers and sisters, turn back to him. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. As soon as, Allah, as Adam ate from the tree and Hawa ate from the tree, alayhim salam, they were, they were down. Low self-esteem. Khalas, they, were, they think it's it, it's over. And there's some narration they thought that's it, they're going to get punished. Then and there. As soon as they knew that they've done a mistake, Ya Rabb, oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves and oppressed ourselves by, by disobeying your command. So as soon as you and I are down, brothers and sisters, turn back to him. Don't turn back to drugs. Don't, don't turn back to fornication. Don't turn back to you know, backbiting and slandering. Don't turn back to things that wallahi will only make things worse. Then we hear this often, that subhanAllah, a brother or a sister, uh, when they get angry, I've got to smoke, I've got to smoke. And uh, apparently after they, have, they take the cigarette, they feel good. How can a sin, how can a sin make you feel good? How can a sin make you feel good? You're moving away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're moving away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What makes you feel good is coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel down, come to the masjid. Pray, pray in a mosque. You're feeling down, read the Quran. You're feeling down, make wudu, pray to rakat. Make dua to Allah, make istighfar. That's what makes it, what makes you feel good. When you feel good, you're doing a sin, that's the, what the shaitan has beautified for you and I. As soon as we feel good doing a sin, the shaitan has, has really, yani, we're in his claws. We are in his claws, making us feel good because we're sinning. Eventually that feeling dies out. Eventually, the good feeling of you being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it dies out. So as soon as you feel down, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The virtues of knowledge. We mentioned last week that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names. And then, قَالَ يَا أَدَمَ أَنْبِئُهُمْ بِأَسْمَئِهِمْ And then he asked, obviously, sorry, he asked uh, the angels, do you know these names? The, Adam, uh, the angels said, no, we don't know these names. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Adam to inform them and teach the angels these names. So they respected him even more. They respected Adam salam, even more. Because of knowledge. And wallahi al-azim brothers and sisters, through knowledge, we are raised in ranks. Our status is high. But with knowledge comes humbleness. Because he was knowledgeable as well. Who knows who's knowledgeable from the story that we mentioned the past couple of lessons? Who's knowledgeable, but he's going to Jahannam? Who knows? I can't. Who? Shaykh Iblis. Iblis, as Ibn Abbas says, عن, he was knowledgeable and he was the most, some of the most noble. Knowledgeable. He was intelligent and smart. What, overca what overcame his, his knowledge? His arrogance. So if you're knowledgeable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with knowledge and you're educated and you're arrogant you don't take advice you're arrogant Wallahi you are heading towards a disaster Like Iblis So it's very important that we know that subhanAllah knowledge is something that's highly recommended in the deen where again we are the nation of Iqra we are the nation of read and we should be of those who read subhanAllah Type the dangers of jealousy What made Iblis disobey the creator and disobey something that he knows is 100% correct he knows Jannah and he knows hell and yet he disbelieved 
One of them is jealousy. Second is the comparison. As mentioned, Ibn Sirin says, Rahimahullah says, Awwal man qas, the first one that compared is Iblis. وَمَا عَوَدَتْ الشَّمْسُ وَلَا الْقَمَرْ إِلَّا بِالْمَقَائِيسِ And the, subhanAllah, the, the, the sun and the moon were taken as gods and any other god except by comparison. طيب. I'm going to give a short example about comparison. Just a general everyday thing that many of the brothers and sisters are falling into. How many brothers and sisters compare themselves and what Allah subhanahu has given them with others? They compare what they have with their brothers, with their sisters, with their brother-in-laws, with, with their sister-in-laws, with their cousins, with their uncles, with, the, with their aunties. Allah subhanahu has blessed you with a car that's what, maybe worth 10,000. Look at that one, he brand, brand new Tesla. I don't know how much is it, 100,000? 100, 100,000, I'm saying. $100,000 car. That's a big, big problem. Do not compare. Do not compare yourself with others. This is what Iblis did with Adam alayhi salam. And then obviously he's destined for destruction and Jahannam. Tayyip. So comparison is something that we need to be aware of. Do not compare yourself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that to look at those who are less fortunate than us. When we see those who are less fortunate, Wallahi, we show gratitude and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, in the abundance of blessings that He's bestowed upon us. Look at those who are less fortunate than us and we then we will show, we then we will have uh, obviously shukur and be obviously content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. We do a sin, again as I said, we do a sin, we repent straight away. طيب. Throughout the, the lessons of Adam alayhi salam is we realize that Iblis has declared the war. And he's going to come at us with all of his power since the time of Adam all the way to the end of time to destroy us. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave us like this? Empty handed? No weapons, nothing to save ourselves and protect ourselves? No. Through the prophets and the messengers, through the Quran, he's informed us of the things that will help us and protect ourselves from the deceptions and the traps and the tricks of the shaitan. Last thing before I finish, inshallah. You're in the middle and around it is one wall. If we can understand this, we'll understand everything, inshallah. You're in the middle, each and every single one of us is, is in the middle and around us there is, there is one wall. This wall is the wall of our obligatory acts. So our fara'id, our, for example, our five prayers, fast in the month of Ramadan, that's one wall. If the shaitan attacks, he's only got one wall to penetrate. As soon as he penetrates, he can take us and drag us down to hell. But if we are in this, in this middle, and that one wall of obligatory acts, another wall surrounds it, which is the sunnah prayers. And a third wall surrounds it, with the sunnah fasting. And a fourth wall surrounds it, with us being obedient to our parents. And the fifth wall surrounds it with our adhkar, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sixth wall surrounds it with recitation of the Quran. And the seventh was obviously coming to the masjid. The shaitan won't bother trying to destroy that wall. The more we do, the more we are protected from our enemy Iblis and his race and his soldiers. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to preserve us and to make of those who enter Jannah to Firdaus. I will say this and I ask Allah and I Allah khair. Well, I Are they both recording?